Hello, friends, and welcome to another exciting episode of No Quest for the Wicked. Gentlemen, I have two questions for you. First, are you ready to rock? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. More importantly, are you ready to roll? Mm -hmm. I think so. This is going to be like the third episode in a row that I want to make a roll into my grave joke because it's been brutal for (laughs) so long. Yeah, it's not looking good. It's not looking good at all. Yeah, I feel uh, like I've been I've been very negative on the are you ready to rolls lately. So this time I was like, I'll just mm, it, you know, I'll, I'll build back up to the positivity because I'm sure it's only going to get better from here. My character sheet is keeping me really like low energy <laughs> right now. Let's rock and roll. Let's do it. Let's do a little recap. You boys are on Sononis Prime. You have successfully stemmed the invasion of both Kadrigal's forces, Ministry of Defense, and also, like, waves of demonic enemies. Uh, You have found out that Arwen Decker is sort of the mastermind of this whole invasion. Uh, At one point in time, he got a message, or he received a secret communication between uh, Hendros and Mezo, who are making a clandestine deal to exchange the serum for all of the materials Mezo needed to complete Project Dahlia. During this time, Decker pieced together a plan that would eliminate what he thought were the threats to Casimal and also an opportunity to reinstate humanity on a planet. That included the blood letters, the Ministry of Defense corruption, the Federation's leadership that allowed that corruption to take place, Mezo and his sort of monopoly and risk of Casimal by pursuing his like trans-dimensional projects, and the people of Sonona's Prime, because he felt like they were just a ticking time bomb before they eventually turned their uh, desires outwards to conquest. All in the name of peace and prosperity and human perseverance. He gave you guys an option to join him and allow for his his plan to come complete. And he would give you a bunch of information, namely about Alpha. Uh, You guys rejected his deal (laughs) and he tried to fight you poorly. And then he got one last chance from whatever demonic entity he had struck a deal with to destroy Sonona's prime. Then he fought us quite well. Uh, at which point he used the like serum that he had Gregerton produce, which allowed him to become a monster version of the three of you using your genetic material. And now he's kind of kicking your ass. Yeah, it's not good. Yes. Um, where we left off, he spotted, and a few of you, I think Merrick and Durin spotted as well, Thimble on a nearby rooftop who is currently filming the fight, presumably to get evidence that this is all a sham to to hopefully end the war. And when he saw Thimble, he Mm -hmm. started charging. And that is where we are. It was just his turn. He's currently now like on all fours, kind of just fucking galloping towards this building. It is Cody's turn. No pressure. Yeah, would I? Okay, it's probably gonna be a no. While charging, would you allow me to pick up my hammer? Uh, No, because you would be going two different directions. He threw you Mm. like further away from everything. So you'd have to go back to get your hammer and then go back towards him. So wouldn't he have thrown me the way he's going? Hammer's closest to the church. He's flowing. He's going the opposite direction. Yeah, okay. Fuck. How far is he down the road? Uh, He's probably like 60 feet because he took like a full charge. Okay. Would you allow me to pick up my hammer during a move action? Yeah. Okay. I like get look at Durin and I say, um, <sighs> if you have any heals, I'm I'm gonna really need them. But this this might be it. And I give him a little a little smooch on the forehead and I'm gonna move over, <laughs> scoop, <laughs> scoop my hammer, and then use my standard action to charge the big demon boy from behind. And as I'm running, I say, Merrick, you said appeal to my creator? Alpha, if you can hear this, help! And I'm just going to slam into Decker from behind. Can you give me a luck check first? <laughs> 11. That is, which I believe is 
That is good. That is a good roll for a luck check. You feel a burst of speed as you're running. You're moving faster than you thought you would. You're going to be rolling these attacks twice and taking the better. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, sh- wait. Is Alpha a god? <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. What, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I'm the Alpha. I'm the Omega, baby. Who's the Omega? We'll find out. That, that gave me more questions than I... Hmm. So first attack's going to be a 30. Okay, yeah, that hits. Uh, that's going to be 33, and you're going to ignore... It's going to bypass four points of uh, damage, damage resistance. resistance. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and then, you... Uh, he's going to take an attack of opportunity. Then. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can we say that one at least hit? I mean, the attack of opportunity will resolve first, so we'll see. Well... <laughs> okay, well, guys... It's been nice. Yeah. Probably a bad time to tell you that you're well out of my channeling range. That's a 23. Oh, God, yeah, I'm good. Thank fuck. Not a good first roll for me. I'll take it. Um, And then the second one is going to be a 24 to hit. 24 does not hit. Ah. Uh, How do you land this first hit as he's running and you get this burst of speed? Uh, last time I like slid under his arm, so this time I think he goes low, and I just like vault over it and like slam him in the side of the head. Perfect. Yeah, you guys are now sort of like running side by side. Uh, he's just taking sort of like every sort of gallop. He takes like a big side swipe at you, but he's very clearly focused on getting to this building rather than fighting you. You're just kind of like a secondary thought at the moment. Dern, it is your turn. Pulling up the radio and be like, Thimble, if you could hear this, get out of there. Enemies en route to your position. You need to evacuate now. Over the radio, you hear, oh yeah, we, we see him. We're going, we're going. Um, and then you see in the distance, like that camera sort yep. of like pull down. And then you also see uh, Astrid peek over the edge and mm-hmm. like grab Thimble. Good. <laughs> and I am going to take aim with my fucking my buster uh sniper this that has one round left that explosive sniper round turn off my radio for a second and say a p- little prayer of his own who are you praying to i think it'll be very obvious we may have not spoken for a long time but each of the lives i've taken has been in your name may this one be as well to that which guides my blade steadies my aim hardens my resolve i give this life to you as my life has always been yours. And I take aim and fire. Uh, roll me a luck check, please. A three. Okay. Continue. Okay. Taking the shot. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Is that a, a 29? 29 to hit. 29 hits. How many damage dice do I get on this? I. Uh, this is 10d6. 48 points of damage. Cody, from behind, you hear another sort of like echoing bang. And you see Decker take this massive shot to the back and he hits the ground and rolls and skids for a bit before being able to sort of like get back into his sort of like full sprint. But you see that as he's running, there is like a trail of this caustic blood that is hitting the ground and like sizzling in the weather is starting to get worse. The sky is darkening as the day grows longer and the snow is beginning to really sort of like whip down. The wind is starting to hold a a bitter chill that seeps into your bones. Merrick, it is your turn. Before you go, you feel a presence. You feel this cold. You feel this chill. And then suddenly you're warm. And you hear a voice. And it whispers quietly, but it feels like it's echoing in your head. It, it sounds the way it sounds when you guys held a ceremony in the canyons of your planet. That echo, that reverberation. And you hear it say, Child of sand and sun, you have a story to tell. And my words will be your words. My voice will be your voice. This story does not end here. Not so long as you draw breath, you will tell the end of this tale. And you, Merrick, please increase your charisma by two. Ooh. All right. And you're also going to get an ability called Story and Song. And what it does 
is as a reaction, you can honor Talavet, the storyteller, and you either make a rousing speech or a fearsome warning. You add your ranks and diplomacy to an ally's attack roll or saving throw if you decide to make a speech, or you subtract your ranks in intimidation to any its enemy's attack roll or saving throw if you want to make a warning. Damn, some beefy power. Mm -hmm. Culture also becomes a class skill for you. If it's not already, if it is already, you get a plus two to those checks. And the DC to recall knowledge with culture is reduced by five. Now, how often can he do that? Uh, the the blessing is a, a once once off. You can do it once. Yeah. Um, but the charisma and the culture check bonuses are permanent. Pelivet, I, one of your people, a Kasathan who's turned his back on tradition and story, have understood that tradition is fluid. It's flexible. We can make it what we want it to be. So let me take up my arms as my father Baron did to be the protector of my clan. Let me, Merrick von Baron, be the protector of my clan, of these people. Let me do whatever I can to bring forth my purpose, to complete it, and to keep everyone safe. And Merrick charges forward to make an attack. Uh, 15 on the dice, so that's gonna be a 30, 30 plus. 30 plus works. Nice. 39 points of damage as Merrick boosts forward with all of his might, blazing that photon energy, slashing into the back of Decker, the demon man. Let's uh, let's stop him, Cody. Let's do what we can. Stop it in his tracks. That's the plan. Do this together. It is Decker's turn. Well, wait. Did you do damage? Oh, yeah. 39 damage to his his face. To his his butt, actually. His butt. He doesn't have a butt, actually. He lost it. Oh, my God. So horrifying. Oh, no. (laughs) He's given up more than I could have imagined. Wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. The three of us are thick as fuck. And he combined us and doesn't have an ass? He doesn't have an ass. He gave it up. That doesn't make no. any sense. That's, yeah, that's he got the bad evolution blood. has gone awry. It wasn't worth it. Maybe it's like two positives make a negative, but three positives. Like, he's got an anti-ass. Oh, my God. He is going to do uh, an acrobatic check to get it out of your threatened ranges. Uh, we'll do it. Like, Merrick is on one side. Durin has just launched a giant fucking, like, mortar strike from his gun. And Cody's on the other side. He uh, presses down with those uh, hands that are, like, covered in black holes and just, like, launches himself into the air. And you see him crest up and arc over. And he lands further down the street and grabs onto the front of a car and throws it towards Merrick and Cody. You're both going to have to give me reflex saves, please. Uh, That's a 21. Cody? Uh, How's the 10? Mm, Bad. Yeah. (laughs) Cody, you take 16 points of damage, and Merrick, you take uh, 18 points of damage. Or sorry, 8 points of damage. Uh, As Cody, you try to get out of the way, but you're just a little too slow, and the, the hood of the car just fucking like clips you in the shoulder and Merrick you're able to get out of the way but some of the glass shards from the impact of Cody and it hitting the ground uh, spray out and just kind of slash you across the face. Every scar is but a story. We top of the round it's Cody. Alright Cody while still running like wipes a hand across his face and wipes the blood from his nose away and I'm going to use keep fighting uh, to regain some stamina. Okay, so I regain 18 stamina, uh, and then standard action, charge, double attack. You got to attack of opportunity me, I guess. Oh, yes, he does. Can I stealth while I'm running to see if he notices me? <laughs> He's, he definitely sees you. You're running through <laughs> like He's an open He's the other way. He's, He's looking at the tower. He's at you. That is a 36. Yep. Oof. Don't say things like that. <laughs> that was old max damage. Uh, <laughs> <that> <laughs> 26 points of damage. Is any of that fire? It is cold. God damn it, Dan. Well, there goes all my stamina. Is it 26? Yeah. And it's all cold? There's no bludgeoning aspect There's, to it? It's all cold. Does 36 beat your KC plus 4? Uh, yes. Then you're also grabbed. Wonderful. <laughs> um, and he's going to use his reaction to throw you back at Merrick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, that is a that is a 30, 32 uh, to hit you, Merrick. KAC. 32 does it. 
Uh, that is 17 points of damage to each of you. This is bludgeoning. No. Okay. As you come running in, uh, Decker sort of gets into like a three-point stance and braces for this attack. And as you swing your hammer, he grabs your hammer by the head, pulls you into like a bear hug, and then sort of like squeezes you until he feels you sort of go limp. He puts his hand on his on your chest, pushes you down, and then grabs you by your legs and just fucking like swings you around and throws you back into Merrick. Uh, Merrick, you've just narrowly dodged this car. And yep. as you look up, there's now a Cody going flying through the air and crashes into you. Yeah, I hit Merrick and like I rebound off and like stagger to my feet and I'm saying, oh, he, he, and I just vomit blood and fall down and I am unconscious. Shit. Okay. Uh, Durin, it is your turn. All right. I have 50 feet of movement. Can I get within 30 feet of the boys? Uh, so they would have run 60. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you okay. do. I that. rush 50 feet and just focus on, I guess, my past, the pain, and push out some healing juice as I give you boys 27 points of HP. Oh, yeah. I rolled real low on that channel. Fuck me. We're not out of this yet. We gotta stop that thing before it gets there. That building. It is your turn, Merrick. All right, Merrick's gonna keep the chase on Cody. Get to your feet. Go until neither of us can breathe, all right? Uh, I don't need to breathe. That's the spirit. <laughs> fair, fair enough. Never mind. Function? I don't know. Anyway, uh, Merrick's going to, once again, keep pace, get up there, and with his reach weapon, make an attack and not hopefully not provoke an attack of opportunity. Uh, yeah, you're good. That's going to be a 28. 28 hits. 42. As I'm just trying to spill that acidic blood across all this snow. Is It's green, I imagine, in my head? Or is it red? It's like crimson red. Or like Ooh, ruby gross. red, like it's it's almost like glowing. Uh, yeah. But like the second it hits the ground, it's just sort of like hardens and like you can hear it like sizzling into the. Uh, um, it's a little made. It's made a little more dramatic because of how cold it is as well. Yeah. So it's like you're seeing like these plumes of smoke as soon as it hits. But yeah, that's a that's a good hit. Can I roll a? I know it's not great, but can I just roll like a raw mysticism or something to try to figure out if there's any way to like weaken the connection between a demon on the mortal like on, on the physical plane like if there's anything we can do to uh sure yeah roll roll me and we'll see what happens natural 20 i swear Oof. to fucking christ <laughs> danger says no <laughs> so it's something we can do Dang. piecing everything together and what you know about this kind of stuff you know that he has made you know that he has made a deal with a devil quite literally and the only way to sort of like circumvent that would be to make an, another deal with that same devil to oh, okay. interrupt it. Like, you'd have to make a, a better deal for the devil to be like, actually, yeah, fuck this guy. But knowing sort of like the 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 organization that this devil is from, which is the Cult of the Devourer, you know that, like, you guys don't really have the chips to sort of buy into that deal. Like, you guys aren't going to do the destruction that he... War would want, or like the devil would want out of you. You know that, like, we did. We were on a planet that exploded and kind of <laughs> linked. I don't know. We've got a pretty good resume. You did, however, also, you know, disagree to let the devil do what he wanted with this planet. Fair I enough. Guess. Severing his specific tie would be very difficult, but that doesn't mean that you can't go from like the human aspect of things and try to, like, appeal to Decker. All right. Right? Like, Decker would be... Yeah. Decker is the human element to this, and he is the weak link in terms of, like, this this power balance. Um, so trying to find a way to influence Decker might be the best way to sort of find moments of vulnerability. Awesome. Oh, that was your turn, right? So yeah, now I'll it save is... My, I'll save my pleas for my next my next round. Okay, it is Decker's turn. It's just you threatening him right now, right, Merrick? Correct, yeah. Yeah, I think he's got acrobatics out. You're hitting very hard. Well, he doesn't want me to take two attacks on him in a round. He's trying to avoid that. Yeah, he just God barely makes it. it. Yeah, he just fucking squeaks under. He got a 33. Uh, how are you uh, so agile and so big? Neither, no, None of us are good at that. Where's that coming from? <laughs> I think Darren has pretty good acrobatics, right? Yeah, but he's tiny. Yeah. Yeah, but he's tiny. This You're guy's a big huge. fat Durin. Big he's fat Durin couldn't do that. If I if I was a bulky Durin, I wouldn't be able to do this shit. Exactly. He's got a, he's got a tail and no butt. 
to slow him down. That's fair. <laughs> it's, that's fair. It's the thickness that's slowing him. That slowed, yeah. slowed him down. Okay. Um, so once again, he leaps uh, and he makes it to the side of that building, and he just like smashes on to the side. Uh, he punches his like fists through the wall, and is just kind of like fucking hulk climbing up it but you can see he's like this isn't really what he's meant to do um so once he gets to the next like row of windows uh he smashes it and then climbs into the building Uh, bastard this seems to be like a six-story building he's like on floor like three are our friends still on the very top um you know that they are running you don't know specifically where they have gone you don't know if they've gone like down or across the rooftops or whatever but you know that they are not just standing there waiting and I think that will be his turn. I don't think it makes sense for him to actually, it definitely does make sense for him. Um, <laughs> as you see him disappear into the room or into that third floor, all of a sudden two desks come flying out of the window. And once again, Cody and Merrick, you're going to have to give me reflex saves, please. Or I guess you're closer now too, aren't you, Dern? All sure. three of you give reflex saves as he's like, as just like a torrent of office supplies come flying out of this window i was rolling too hot for too long that's just gonna be a six 18 i got i got a nice 29 on that one fuck yeah okay Dern, you're fine because of evasion Mm -hmm. merrick and cody you take 14 points of damage each as you guys are running after him and you just get like fucking smoked with a chair and fucking merrick you get hit with like a uh, like a desk drawer now am i prone uh i guess yeah you would be does that give me a bonus to ranged attacks? Yeah, this is a reflex save, not a ranged attack. Still, he's throwing something at me. It's a ranged attack. Yeah. Dane. <laughs> is he I mean, attacking me with that range? <laughs> if you're on the ground and someone throws a desk at you, you're not getting... You're not... No, it's harder to hit me, is the point. <laughs> is it? Yeah. If someone's dropping a desk on you from above? He's not dropping it at me. I'm so far away. <laughs> he's throwing it at you. I'm like I'm 100 feet away. Things. He must get that from me. That's uh, cool. I mean, 14? If you look... If you look at prone and it gives you a bonus to reflex. No, it doesn't. <laughs> yes, it was 14. Uh, it is Cody, your turn. Uh, I guess move action, get to my feet. I just go like, oh, God. you see, like, like my arms, like hanging a little like limp, uh, covered in blood. And, like things are sparking. I just, uh, I just if you got you know, you know, healing and I just lift my hammer over my shoulder and I'm going to charge into the building uh okay cool um so he i I would say he was about like 45 feet up is like where the window he smashed through yeah i assume i can only like charge and like knock down the front door with my hammer because i need to close that distance and there's no way i can jump to the third floor so yeah that's me cool Duran, your turn if i can i'm hoping to get another heal off uh before he goes in but i don't know if i can see him or not and i don't know if that matters for the channel um you would have to if you want to delay after merit you would only be able to get one of them at the moment uh let's i'm gonna rush in after cody because really that's where my that's that's where my heart's gonna be in this anyway so Dern just makes a bolt towards cody probably get next to him because i think i'm a little faster and just channel once again like we got this buddy we can't let him out i was trying try harder with 41 points of heals Ooh, that definitely makes me feel better. Are you remembering to take your resolve points every time you take this, Terry? Oh, yes. Trust me. I'm pretty, like, I'm <laughs> at 5 out of 12. Uh, Merrick, it's A your turn. smile on Dane's face when you said that. Astrid, Thimble, uh, where are you? We're trying to get through the buildings. We're, we're on the rooftops, but we're going to try to dip down soon just so we break line of sight. I don't, wanna know. I don't know if I should blow this now just to get next to him to slow him down. He's just going to keep running, but... Or fuck it, whatever. Let's just let's let's get it. Let's get let's get in the funk. Merrick turns into a beam of light and appears right next to Decker. Oh fuck! Duran and Cody, you hear and see a blinding light shoot up diagonally into the third floor window. Decker is currently ripping the door off that's leading up to the like elevators. Like he's he's got both arms pressed in and just like is tearing them off. He's not prying them open. He's literally like peeling them like sardine cans and he's just like folding them open and he doesn't really notice you're there at the moment. All right, I'll take my attack. Is that a move action? You could just like fucking yeah. light teleport? God, yeah, dude. So Anywhere awesome. I can see. I was hoping that I could get to see them, teleport next to them, use my jump boots to bring them down to the ground and then they could run away from there, but they <laughs> hid in the buildings. Anywhere I can see, it's nuts. All right, let's make this attack. You've reached, so you won't get an attack of opportunity on you. That's a natural one. 
No. Wait, is there any way you can re-roll that anyway? Do we have anything? We don't. This campaign, we don't have a lot of re rolly stuff. What do you think this looks like? Um, I think Merrick, for some reason, falters. I think that the, the idea that he can fail o- overwhelms him for a little bit. Like, he has the, all the chances in the world here. He doesn't know he's there. You get, his back is turned to him. There's no reason he should ever miss this. And then for a second, he thinks about what will happen if they lose. And he hesitates and he misses. It is Decker's turn. He's going to take an attack on you. Uh, that's a 37. Yeah, that does it. Does it beat your KAC plus 8? Or sorry, uh, uh, plus 4. Uh, 4, yes. First, you're going to take slam damage. Uh, that is not a whole lot. That's 22 points of cold damage. And now I'm going to be an asshole. You take that moment of hesitation. He turns around and grabs you by the face. And you feel that cold, that bitter, bitter cold of space sort of beginning to like take your breath away as he just has like this just a full palm over your face he slams you into the ground and then throws you out the window uh and you are going to take uh some falling damage and you have your boots i have my boots hold on you throw me a uh d12 please if you roll four or lower you're not going to make it out the window i rolled an 11 it's gonna be 11 d6 of damage as he yeah. fucking eats you out the window if you want to look up how the boots work, I don't know. I'm not sure. It, like, if it's fe- like Featherfall, where it just automatically activates, then I will half this. You fall at a rate of 60 feet per round, and you take no damage upon landing. No, but it has to be an action to activate. Okay. So, yeah, I take full damage. You take 38 points of falling damage as Cody and Durin, you guys are at the front door. Durin, you're channeling that energy, that, that, that wound. Cody, you're starting to feel the warmth of... Durin's presence, and then you see Merrick fly out behind you and hit the ground hard right behind you guys. Hi, Merrick. Are you still up, Merrick? Barely. Okay. That was Decker's turn. That was the worst thing you could have done to me, Dave. <laughs> you don't know what he's doing in the building. Cody, it's your turn. Can I roll a perception to hear what's happening above? For sure. Nat 20. What a waste. <laughs> Um, you hear the, the sounds of, like, screeching metal, and then from the elevator shaft, you hear... You can pretty much piece the things together that he is in the elevator shaft climbing up it to the roof. Uh, Thimble, um, he's in the elevator shaft climbing up. Uh, have you guys gotten clear? We're a couple buildings over. We're, we're heading in now. Okay, okay. Can I see the rooftop of, like, the next building through the window? You guys are at, like, the the entrance to the building and you're not sure which direction they have gone they could gone like like left right or kept going straight so right now you're like standing in front of a building pretty much it's it's almost impossible to see the rooftop of any building other than the ones like behind you yeah i thought they wouldn't be i'm going to use my grappler to connect it to the top of the roof and then retract what's the range on the grappler i think 50 feet so you'd be able to get to the window that he smashed through because yeah. that's about 45 feet up. So you'd be able to like hit the the, the ledge of the win- the top of the window that he was in. Because the, the whole building itself is about 90 feet. Uh, I go to a window then, I guess. Okay, yeah. So you get into the, the window. You see sort of like all the fucking desks have been like shoved to the side. You can see the ones that have been like ripped out of the ground and thrown at you. And then you see the elevator door that has been like peeled open and then holes in the wall from where he's obviously just kind of like climbed up through it. Um, and you can hear him like still doing it in the in the fucking shaft. Hey, that's that's me. Like doing it in the shaft is an all time Dan quote. <laughs> <laughs> doing it in the shaft. That is Dern, your turn. Dern, uh, Dern's going to rush over to Merrick and give him a little tap on his shoulder. Maybe help him. Oh, can I? I don't know if, if you'll allow it, but like I got to touch him anyway to cast the spell. Can I help pick him up? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. As I uh, cast a Mystic Cure as a level three spell. Nice. So I think it's 5d8 plus your wisdom. Fuck me. That's a good roll. Damn. 32 points of heals, buddy. Nice. I can't I can't do that damage like you can. Get in there. Make sure they're safe. I'm relying on you on this one, buddy. Merrick, it's your turn. Calls for a change of tactics. Merrick goes into graviton mode. I will not falter again. I guess I have to take the stairs. <laughs> In eight rounds, we'll be at the top of this building. Yeah. Um, I run really fast because of my first feet I took first level. I can run but at only four in times a straight line. Oh my God. It's only in a straight line? Yes, it is. Motherfucker. <laughs> They're very straight stairs. <laughs> They're just one solid ramp. He's really stumped us with this building puzzle. <laughs> 
Good thing we got that stair machine in the ship. I, okay, give me an athletics check. I think using movement and counting movement fucking sucks and is boring. So give me the athletics check, and I will say that if you roll me, is 25 impossible for you? 25 I is... I just got 26, motherfucker. Okay, then I will say that you're able to get to the floor that Cody is on. Merrick's just, like, like sweating now, like he's glistening. <laughs> Come on, Cody. Can I bring Merrick with me if I zip line the rest of the way up on my turn? Yes, I, yeah, I, absolutely. If you want to, like, hold him and, and grapple up, yeah. I will say okay. that is... You see, me, like, Cody. a very bloodied, very fucked up looking Cody just kind of, like, panting and holding a grappler, and he just, like, reaches out an arm, and he's like, going, going up? Going up. Uh, okay, it is uh, Decker's turn, and you you hear the, the noises in the elevator shaft subside, and that's pretty much it. Uh, Cody, it is your turn. Standard action, shoot the top of the roof, move action, retract, carry Merrick. Yeah, you go zipping up the uh, elevator shaft and sort of like swing out into what has, (laughs) you see the elevator doors have been like smashed off and you swing out onto the rooftop and you see Decker is just standing in the center of the roof and he's panting and he's like, again, like sort of in a three point stance, And he's just, like, looking. And he says, Where is she? Where is Aurelius? She needs to die. I will remove her existence. When people think of the hero of humanity, they will never, ever think of the name Aurelius again. They will think Decker. Decker, I just made a new friend uh, who happens to be the goddess of stories. So let me, let me tell you how I see the story so far. A weak, pathetic man, thinks he's smarter than everyone else, does a bad gamble, gets lucky, but we get in his way, makes another plan. Oh, I'm going to save a day. Gets lucky, we get in his way again. No one is going to remember you, Decker. All they have is a 30-second shot of you declaring war. That's all these people know you as so far. And they all they said is, who's that guy? Who's that weirdo? He's not the hero here. What's he doing here? You have done nothing that people are going to remember. And now you're a weird, thick forearm rat man. You think humanity is going to remember some demonic monster? The end of the story for you, Decker, died in that church. This isn't your story anymore. This is the Devourer's story. You are just a pawn in his play, my friend, and you will never take the lead again. Roll me. Do you have ranks in Intimidate? I have some. You know, give, give me a diplomacy check. 28. Sorry, I have a new bonus in diplomacy. 20, 30. Okay. Uh, that is a very good roll. You see sort of like he, he goes from like this hulking sort of like enraged creature. And for a very brief moment, you see flashes of like Decker. Like you see you see the, the realization and the lucidity in his eyes and that rage subsides for a second. And uh, you see him sort of like process what you just said. And you, you hear him muttering something. And then you hear him saying, no, 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 this can't be it. This, no, I did this for them. I did this for humanity. No, they will remember me. I will be their hero. It's uh, Durin's turn. Oh, I didn't. Oh, I didn't take any actions, though. It's, it's not your turn yet. <laughs> oh, it's not Wait, my turn. Yet. Yeah, yeah, I was just, oh, I was just It was my go. Yeah, it was Cody's turn, which I assume you were out of actions, right? Like grappling up was. No, yeah, I'm out. Uh, okay, Durin, you are on the ground floor. Cody has ziplined away. You just saw Merrick haul ass up the stairs. What would you like to do? He feels exhausted, a little hopeless, but he's he's still in it. And he's just going to sigh heavily as he looks at the stairs and use all <laughs> all 100 feet of movement to start going up a uh, okay, I will say that, like, uh, if you want, you can give me an athletics check. Okay. okay uh, we'll and do. we'll see if you can you can power up. But 100 feet is, is pretty good for running upstairs. I got a 37. Uh, yeah, you okay. <laughs> fucking haul ass up these stairs. I'm going to say that you are, like, next round you can get to the roof. Hell with, yeah. Like, a simple move action. Dura never skips leg day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're just like down on all fours, just like just fucking <laughs> hauling ass up these stairs. Uh you see the sort of like fire exit roof access, you know, employees only door at the top there. You're you're like a couple feet away from it. The trick is it's always leg day. Uh Merrick, it is your turn. All right, let's try this one more time. Merrick is gonna move up and make an attack. Okay. He does not take his reaction. I guess he doesn't you have reach, but yeah. you, you see that he is not like sort of focused at the moment. 
Uh, 28. Uh, yes, that will hit. 44 points of damage. The bravado is coming back in America. He was down for a couple of rounds there, but we're back. Uh, I have to do some quick math. Dane's like, does he enter his third, more powerful form, or... Yeah. At what point does he activate his insta-kill ability? When he crits. <laughs> God. Okay. Is that your turn? What's the chances he throws me off this building again? <laughs> I mean, if he grabs you, he's probably going to do it. <laughs> I have an ability I've been saving. I haven't used it yet, Ooh. which will keep me next to him for a round. But I don't know if this is where I blow it. But you know what? I think I'm just going to do it. Merrick channels as a swift action, channels graviton energy throughout his body, and he becomes incorporeal. Okay. Nice. And he sort of phases. Like, you can still see, like, a purpley essence of Merrick, but he sort of phases into the darkness for a little yeah. bit. Yeah. I like to imagine like your eyes are still like it's just like glowing eyes yeah. kind of and just like yeah. kind of like purple smoke coming out of them and you're kind of like a wispy. Yeah, that's cool as fuck. Yeah. Um, the snow is like whipping now. You're, you're pretty much in like a whiteout. You can maybe see like a couple 20, 30 feet in either direction. After that, it is just white. Once again, this, you can tell the sun is going down through the overcast. Um, it's starting to get dark, just sort of like haze of the few remaining buildings that still have power in the distance. And you see Decker standing there, pretty much the sole source of illumination from his like blazing arms. And he can't attack you, Merrick. Nope. So he is going to. He is fully attuned. It's a good thing I fucked off. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye again. He looks at you, Cody, and he says, You'll never find it. What you're looking for, it's gone. It's gone forever. And you will never find it. You can scour every inch of this system, every inch of the universe, and you will never find it. It's gone. It's gone. And he goes to full attack you. That's a 23 on the first attack. Uh, that is a 36. Yep. Uh, does he beat your yep. KAC plus four? Okay. Uh, my KAC is not even in the 30s, Dane. We need to upgrade if we survive this shit. <laughs> yeah, I hope uh, so. You take 24 points of damage. Okay. And once again, he misses with his first swipe and then pins you against the wall with his big clawed hands. Uh, you feel his claws go through your clavicle and pin you against the cement wall. And then he raises you back and slams you again and just keeps slamming you into the side of this elevator until the cement crumbles and cracks and the shaft opens up wider. And then he just pushes you through and you're going to take fall damage. Uh, you take 29 points of damage as Merrick, you see Cody hit the back wall of the shaft and then just occasionally you hear like a gunk, gunk, gunk. And then finally, a very sickening thud at the end of it, where you just hear, <laughs> um, are you still up, Cody? Uh, let me do my math. Yes. Okay. Uh, and then he turns around, and he just sort of, like, throws two fire blasts at you, Merrick, as they just kind of, like, soar through. And it is now, Cody, your turn. I guess I'm going to walk up the stairs. I, like, you know, spend two rounds getting to the top of the roof again. I mean, you, should, you grappler still works, right? Yeah, but you said only gets me halfway up the building, right? So two rounds. Yeah, yeah, it would get you. Yeah, if you want, here's what I'll give you. If you give me a good athletics check, I'll let you climb the like the elevator thing. Sure. And get back up to the roof. Um, athletics. So that's just a straight shot. Yeah, that's a thirty-six. Oh yeah, easy. Uh, you are able to sort of like brace your yourself against the wall and sort of like scale up the elevator cable to the the top of the building. So you're once again, like, hanging in the, the elevator shaft. Um, and he looks at you and he just says, Why won't you die? What do you have to live for? Killing you, for starters, and then I'll I'll find him anyway. Durin, it is your turn. All right, I'm going to do a trick attack. It's, it's a classic. I'm all, I have a movement to get there, and I'm going to use it to stealth up and try to make sure I have a shot when I get in there. Uh, my stealth is a 33. That is enough. Okay, come up the final stairs, being sneaky as fuck. Scrambler pistol in hand. Oh, fuck yes. 30! That hits. Fuck yes, fuck yes! Get him. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Um, 40 points of damage, and I would like him to give me a fortitude save, please. It's a 19 on the die. Well, he's not uh, staggered, so 
that's fine. It would have been very good to stagger him. <sighs> would have been super nice. But still, 40, 40 uh, points damage ain't bad. How do you shoot him? What does that look like? I'm just like mainly stealthing. I don't know his position at all. And just kind of sneaking up the stairs as quickly and as quietly as possible, turning the corner, and it's just like eyeline, gun, and just shoots. It's There's no thought to it. When you shoot him, he, he stops his sort of like furious barrage of fire attacks on this like ghostly Merrick form. He's just like whipping fireballs. And when you shoot him, he like stops for a second. And he's almost like enveloped in this steam as blood is just sort of like underneath one of his arms leaking out. And it's like it's hitting the ground and it's just sort of like just rising, billowing clouds of steam from this sort of like infernal blood. Merrick, it is your turn. Do I have to move to hit him as he moves that far away from me? No. Awesome. Merrick and his hands number three and four has his notebook out and his pen and he's writing to himself, three heroes defeat weird demonic monster. Hmm, yeah, that's what you are. What's your name? Doesn't matter anymore. Or three heroes slain by the devourer. That's not your name either, Decker. That's very strange that you're not being recorded in any of this because this isn't your will. This isn't your doing. This isn't your power. Why don't you just fuck off? I can't think of anything smarter. You're just pathetic. So why don't you just get on your knees and die as Merrick activates All Shall Kneel as this aura comes from him as a movement action. A 20-foot radius around him. I'll need a fortitude save from you. Okay. Natural one. He is overburdened. So he can only move five feet. His dex bonus to his AC is reduced to zero, and he takes a minus five penalty to strength and dex base checks. Okay. His zero. Okay. Damn. All right. And then Merrick's going to attack. Um, that w- I might miss on the attack, even with the dex gone. That's going to be a 22. No, because of the dex, that hits. Let's fucking go. Low on the dice, so that's only going to be 33 points of damage. Damn. Um, it's stupid. It's stupid how much damage you do. I love it, though. <laughs> I love it. How do you how do you hit him? So Merrick, once again, this will is upon him. He's like, he wants to look at him like he's a pathetic like creature. Like, he, you know, he's, he's, he's being god. He's being like, he's just, as he gets forced to the ground by gravity, Merrick just comes over and slashes down at him, even though he's a bigger creature. Yeah, and he's shrinking a little. Like, as you as you write this, this sort of, like, manifest, uh, your little burn book that you have for Decker at the moment, you can see him sort of, like, shrinking. And then he looks upwards and just screams. Uh, it is his turn. A wave of energy ripples off him. And I think it's just you right now, Merrick, that needs to give me a fort save. Um, that's low for me, too. Are we going to be kneeling each other down? <laughs> um, that's going to be fortitude. That's only going to be a 15. Okay. That, uh, that fails. Um, you see those, like, waves of, like, graviton energy that he had released earlier. Uh, they're weaker this time, but they seem to just be, like, pulsing out of him now. He's not mm-hmm. sort of, like, throwing them. They're just, they're just exploding out of him. You take... 17 points of damage, and you are knocked prone. Uh, And that is his turn. Cody, you swing out of the elevator shaft. You see Merrick get blasted back and down onto the ground. Uh, Durin is sort of like just cresting out of the like the fire exit. Hammer in hand, what would you like to do? You can still take reactions when he's uh, all shall kneeled, right? Yeah, I would assume so. It's just to his Minus uh, minuses to his AC mm-hmm. and to doing skills. Cody is going to try to acrobatics in as you see his lenses start spinning that clock, and I'm going to roll twice, take the better acrobatics, and I'm just like, Alpha, I, did you hear me when I when I spoke? I I need your help. That's a net twenty. <laughs> Whoa! For a thirty nine total acrobatics. Yeah, yeah, you get in. Really wish that net twenty was on my attack, but you know what? And then I take one attack. That's what, these are what the nat ones are for, buddy. Okay, you know what? Because it's <laughs> no, it's not in that one. Okay. I thought it was a two. <laughs> I thought it was a two, but it's a nine. Uh, that's a oh, twenty-six yeah. to hit. Twenty-six hits. As you see, just before I hit him, my hammer changes slightly. As I finally <laughs> hit him the fifth time with this hammer, so it's gonna do a little extra damage. Uh, 34 points of bludgeoning electrical as he's knelt there and I just like crack him on the top of the head. And it obviously ignores four points of uh, damage reduction as well. How do you kill Arwen Decker? Oh, fuck yes. 
Oh my god. I guess, like, he's been made to kneel. He does this kind of, like, last chance blast, knocks Merrick to his feet, and, like, as he's struggling, you just see, almost like in slow motion, Cody, like, front flip over where he, like, would be swinging and just come down with the hammer right on the back of his head, and, like, it just crushes him into the the roof, and the roof cracks a little bit, and then Cody falls over. There is a, a moment of, of calm and quiet. You hear the wind whipping in the distance some sirens and even overhead the the battle in the skies has silenced the smell of that sulfur uh is is really the 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 permeating thing on this rooftop the three of you bloodied broken on death's door you have a a moment to to breathe as arwen decker lies lifelessly at your feet you see Cody's, like, curled up in the fetal position. He's, like, Fuck. shaking. Um, yeah, I rush over to Cody. I want to check if Decker's dead, but Cody's priority just... Hey, buddy, you okay? He knew. He knew. He knew. He knew about Alpha. He, he knew about Alpha. And he, he knew and killed him. Cody? He's never gonna, he's never gonna tell me. He, he's never Cody. gonna tell me. I... He said I won't find him. Think about it like this, my friend. He said I won't find him. Okay. He said I won't find him. Okay. Merrick comes over to you and sort of sits next to him. Think of this, Cody. You were made by Alpha, correct? Very few people knew you. Correct. Azen is programmed to hunt you. So who or what could have given Azen the knowledge about you, the specs about you, to program him like that? Either Alpha himself or someone who knows Alpha. So the lead is not Colt. We have a clue from Azen. We'll pursue it next. It is not over. Don't listen to what a pathetic dying man was saying to you, trying to hold on for dear life, all right? You've got your two best friends. We have a lead, and we're going to find Alpha. What if that was it? It's not it. Okay. Story's not over. Were you praying out loud just out of curiosity? Me? Yeah. Oh, for sure, yeah. I mean, in some ways it feels like you may have gotten an answer, though it's kind of vague. I don't you know saw it. that, right? I ran real fast. Real I don't fast. have an explanation beyond some sort of divine intervention, but I don't know what that even means at this point. Or you're, you're something is programmed in you that make you even more than you are, and you sort of maybe more of that came out today. Maybe Alpha was thinking about you the whole time. I'm real fucked up. So so am I. Um, I got thrown off so many things. We got tossed around. Yeah. <laughs> Durin flew like a hundred feet. A lot. It was it was not great. It's not good. I didn't know you were a flying rat. Wait, I learned it too, buddy. I learned it too. Is there a place we can get some heels, at least somewhere we can lay down low? Yeah, we have to hope that this is this is over. I look around for the third boss that's going to show up. <laughs> that's his third form. Does he get back up? <laughs> I check the corpse. Is it dead? Is it fuck. dead? Can the three of you give me perception checks? Don't you fucking oh, dare. <laughs> There's too much blood in Cody's eye. I get 15. 25. 17 on the dice, um, 25, no, uh, 25 as well. Durin and Merrick, you see a twitch. You son of a bitch. In Decker, the like magma arms that encase two of them, still glowing slightly with ember. And then that sulfur smell gets stronger. As his arms reignite, he presses one hand against the floor of this roof and you hear his breathing resume. His skull still crushed as he stands. He's staggered, his head caved in, and then he lunges at the three of you. And then a purple energy surrounds him, and he is held in place. Hmm. And then you hear a voice say, special delivery, asshole, as a satchel charge comes flying overhead. Yes! Oh. And straps around his neck, and behind you in the doorway, you see a incredibly fucked up Short Jack and Cathan. Short Jack is resting on Cathan's shoulder, kind of like hanging on to him like a backpack. His arm outstretched, glowing with purple graviton energy. Uh, you can see him shaking and quivering. And Cathan draws his pistol, holds it out, and Short Jack spins the chamber. And Cathan looks up and says, A pickup would be real nice right now. As 
you hear over your comms, Ah, we're on our way! As through the smoke and the haze of the storm, you see the lights of persistence and a big blue goopy hand as it scoops Decker up and into the sky. Cathan raises his pistol and shoots as in free fall, Arwen Decker explodes. Hello, Space Jam Dane here to do the things. First and foremost, we hope you are enjoying this week's episode. Second, this week has been sponsored by Zencaster. I talked about it before, but Zencaster is the whole reason that you're hearing this show. Uh, we have dudes all over our lovely country. We have Ryan is across on the other end, the East Coast. Terry lives in another city. Nile and I are the only two people who live in the same city. It would be very difficult to do the show if it wasn't for something like Zencaster. It is a all-in-one podcasting studio where we can all just jump on. We record the show. We don't have to worry about backups or losing any progress because even with a slow connection, you've got crystal clear audio quality and backups that are saved on site. Zencaster makes it incredibly easy for us to get together, record the show. It is stress-free. It's worry-free. It makes the whole experience very easy. In fact, I'm recording this break in my studio, which is a closet, as you know. And then I'm going to literally walk into my living room where I edit the show and download the files all from there. I don't need to do any transferring. It's all right there. You can access them on any computer as long as you just log into your account. Using Zencaster is now super easy to record a podcast. Log in using any browser, start recording a high quality podcast episode right away. Record studio quality sound and up to 4K video with your guests. Feel a sense of Zen knowing Zencaster's multi-layered backups ensure that you always have your recording in the highest quality, even if your connection is unstable. If you've ever thought of starting Starting your own podcast and then realize that you need a bunch of tools and services and platforms. Well, those days are over. Zencaster is an all in one podcasting platform. You can create your podcast all in one place and then distribute to Spotify, Apple, and other major destinations. Go to Zencaster.com, that's Z E N C A S T R.com slash pricing and use our code NOQUEST and you'll get 30% off the first month of any Zencaster paid plan. Once again, that is Zencaster.com slash pricing and use our code NOQUEST and you'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. We want you to have the same easy experience that we do for all of our podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story. This week's episode is also sponsored by MistyMountainGaming.com. They are your one-stop shop for all of your tabletop RPG and gaming needs. Comic-Con is just around the corner, and as much as I love going to the con and seeing everyone and being at the booth and yada yada, I also love it because I get to hit up the Misty Mountain Gaming booth and pick up a new set of dice. If you're anything like me, you like to have dice for specific characters and specific moments and specific games. And Misty Mountain Gaming is sort of like the, the best place to go for dice nerds. They also have some really great apparel and uh, accessories like roll towers and dice trays. Literally anything you need to make your gaming experience more luxurious and enjoyable, they got. And we've got you a sweet little deal. Save yourself 10% on anything in the store using our code NOQUEST10. It helps support the show, it saves you some cash, and you get yourself a cool little present. So once again, head on over to MistyMountainGaming.com and use our code NOQUEST10 to save yourself 10% off everything in the store. Speaking of supporting the show, if you would like to... Head on over to our Patreon. We have uh, some more content up there. Every other week, so the week we don't release a new episode, we release something called the 10 Minute Rest, where we, it is a behind the scenes look at the episode we just released, where we jump on a, a new recording and record our thoughts and feelings and emotions and conspiracy theories and whatever else of whatever just happened in that episode. We record it immediately after. So, Everything is fresh, the, the excitement, the tension, the fear, it's all there. And it is available to any paid tier on the Patreon. And if you'd like to join the community, we would love to have you in our Discord. Head on over to NoQuestCast.com, click the Discord link, you'll be invited in. And we would love to see your pets and hear your conspiracy theories and see your fan art and just chat with you. And finally, we have a live show coming up in Toronto. It is a return to our lawful and disorder 
show. It is on Sunday, February 25th at Off World Bar, which is a really cool space, like sci-fi themed bar here in Toronto. It stars myself as the Game Master, of course, and Niall and Terry are playing two buddy cops who have to solve a mystery within the two hour show that we do. Before the time is up, they have to catch the killer and bring them to justice. It's a lot of fun. There's going to be some audience participation. Tickets are available on our Instagram and on our Discord. That's it for this week, friends. We will see you in two weeks' time. You you have impeccable timing. You're both alive! I give them a big hug. You see how fucked up they are, and you notice sort of the damage that specifically Short Jack has taken. His left ear is, like, sh- like almost completely cut off. He is missing a hand, and his right leg looks broken. Kathan also looks really, really bad. Um, the left side of his face is scorched and burnt. His arm also like one of his arms does look to be broken as well thankfully not his shooting or throwing arm and short jack is pretty much like red with blood like he is soaked through and matted and he looks at the three of you and says we all said i'd look cool if i was red right you, you pull it off yeah. me too off, buddy. i'm also covered in blood <laughs> You hear the persistent sort of like circle back around as it lands kind of and hovers at the edge of the building and over comms. You hear Jenny say, um, you guys are welcome to take a little walk, but I'm happy to give you a lift. N- nobody be mad at me. We've, we've got a giant hole in the ship. Where exactly? Where the turret used to be. Okay. I pick up short Jack. It's fine. <laughs> I limp onto we'll, the ship. We'll get a new a new thing. It's fine. Catherine, I think your brother owes us a favor anyway, so maybe we can get this repaired. Catherine just smiles and says, yeah, we're not leaving with a hole on our fucking ship. He kind of like stumbles and, and like hangs onto you both as support, but also as helping you guys as well. And you all drag your sorry asses into the persistence as Jenny uh, flies you guys back to the castle. You land in the courtyard the sky is completely dark now it is it is night the lights around the castle sort of give off this this brilliant illumination and as you guys exit out of the persistence you are met with thunderous applause of the people of Sononis Prime both the imperial forces the armada the civilians that were evacuated into the castle walls it, it, it's deaf the cheers and and applause and Jahara approaches you. You can tell he's also not great. He's showing signs of, of, of intense battle and he just walks right to Kath and pulls him in and gives him like a, a long hug and embrace. He puts his hand at the back of his head and just sort of like presses their foreheads together. Um, and he looks at the rest of you and says, it has been a very long time since Someone not born on this planet has been called Sononin. You have all earned that title today. We are in your debt, and we will be internally grateful. Any word from the, the Federation? Have they surrendered? Is it a stalemate? What's... He pulls out a data pad and turns around and hands it to you, and it is uh, Sev Drepka, who uh, you only met very briefly when you turned yourselves in on Therum. But she is the Vesk commander of the Archons, which are the sort of like elite mech peacekeeping unit of the Ministry of Defense. And she is looking grim and as stern as ever. And she says, as of this moment, all combat operations taking place on Sononis Prime will be suspended. We are ordering a full military retreat and ceasefire. Anyone caught not obeying these orders will be treated as enemies of the Federation and dealt with accordingly. The Archons are here and anyone who chooses to step outside of these orders will be destroyed. Return to your planets. This war is over. Thank God. And then it like cuts to footage of the Decker fight and more importantly, Decker's confession that 
Thimble was using to record off your comms and mics. The the footage isn't great because she's filming from like a mile away, but she's she's zoomed in through sort of a every now and then you can see the you guys pacing around in the church uh, through like one of the holes in the wall. And I really uh, wish I'd said less dumb shit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it seems like it's it's mostly his monologue that is being played and not necessarily your guys' conversation. That's probably for the best. And then you see things like like it's a newsreel that is it is just playing and you see things like people in Contra Dynamics getting arrested. The C- acting CEO at the moment, Susan Roke, is like being arrested on Therum. You see people on the like headquarters in like on Surf uh, all getting arrested for sort of their implied nature of both synthesizing this serum and also the the risks and and illegal nature of making Project Dahlia. And it it seems like a lot of the things that Decker had put into place are coming to fruition, but thankfully not the destruction of Sinonis Prime and the people on it. Have we done it? We've we've done so much. We need a break now. Finally, a a, a win. Uh, Johara nods and just says, look, this was hell for everyone, and I can tell that it has been hell specifically for your crew. Go to the med bay, have our doctors look at you, then get some rest. We will figure out next steps in the morning. But right now, just know that we are safe because of you, and we now need to return that favor. Anyone who is hurt, please go to the infirmary. We have the best doctors, and they will take care of you. Um, and you see sort of like a couple med guys come over they have stretchers they get uh short jack on it you see uh zelfis is helping kathan um some other like medics come over to you and if anyone would like to be carried <laughs> on a stretcher uh you're you're welcome to or or um they also pull up like a small like van kind of ambulance situation that you guys can get in and they will transport you to the infirmary be- before we go aerodaxis he he's okay aerodaxis is safe because of your efforts, the palace walls weren't even breached. The Zashida held up, and everyone here is safe. We lost soldiers, but as far as I can tell, minimal civilian casualties. Okay. I flop into the van. Uh, Merrick Duran, what would you? Are you guys heading to the infirmary, or would you like to do? I just, Jahar, just to ask you and your people have every right to do so, but will you retaliate, or is this it? Are you okay for peace talks? Um, he thinks for a second and says, we don't see what happened as a threat to Sonona's prime. With the information that this Decker has revealed, this is a threat to Castle Mall, and we will respond accordingly. We do not hold the Federation solely responsible for this. If there is something manipulating them, if they have been breached from the inside then that is a issue that they need to deal with. But it does not serve us at this moment to retaliate against them when the threat is much larger to all of us. Thank you. I hop in the van. You boys go ahead. I'm going to, I need a moment to myself. And uh, Durin, who, he doesn't need to go into the infirmary. He's, he's okay. But he had a realization where at his weakest moment in desperation, he said a prayer to the grandmother rat and he in that he kind of realized that he has always been one of hers he doesn't and he's gonna actually go and probably for the first time in a long time make amends or pray okay as you're praying you hear a voice and it's a voice that you you've heard before you're familiar with and it's kaya and it says you are starting to learn even now your understanding i don't know what i am understanding though The hand that swings the axe can also be the hand that sows the seeds. This duality in you, Durin, Mm -hmm. this conflict, it does not need to be who you are and who you were can be the same. Just because sometimes you need to be the one that prunes, that eradicates, it doesn't mean that you need to turn solely to that. You can also be the one that nourishes, that heals, that starts the cycle anew. I'm not here to tell you not to pray to whoever you wish to pray to. Just remember 
that there is more sides to you than one. The past, the present, the future. They don't need to be at odds. And he's going to focus on that, and yet both sides need to be watered and tended to. I'm not going back to my old ways in that sense. I'm looking for that balance you mentioned. Sometimes, to nourish a garden, you must mulch what was there. It is not permanent. Nothing is. So there are times when you need to reap, and times when you need to sow. And you know when those times are. Trust yourself. Trust who you are. Trust balance. Thank you. I think I have found some clarity in all of this. Um, Cool. You guys take a moment to rest. You are, your wounds are tended to, uh, you're healed, you are given a, a very hearty meal. Um, there's no real like celebration or banquet or anything. You're just kind of given like all of the nutrients you kind of need. It's a very serviceable meal. It's not a fancy one. And then you guys are sort of like released to quarters and they are, these are the fancy things. Like the, the quarters you guys are given are, are lavish. You are given sort of like estate rooms within the palace. Is there anything you guys would like to do? Or do you want to just sort of progress to the next day? Merrick's just going to rest. Lots of sleep, lots of rest. Yeah, I think Cody is just, he's just going to like hug a pillow and stare at the wall and try to rest. You guys get your night's rest. You pass out. You are refreshed in the morning. You you feel, despite what you just went through, you feel okay. You're sore. You went through fucking hell the day before. So your your muscles are feeling it and no one comes to get you. Like you wake up when you wake up. No one, there's no wake up call. No one is knocking on your doors. But when you are ready, when you wake up and you finally get out of bed, there is sort of like a note saying to join everyone at the the war room. All right. I can't imagine how stiff we all feel. Oh my God. We got thrown against so many things. So mm. many things. I want to ask what everyone's HP was, but let's save it for the, the 10 minute rest because right. I need to know. I need to know how close we all were to party wipe. <laughs> uh yeah i i head towards the war room getting out of my oversized t-shirt and suiting up <laughs> back into the war room merrick are you doing anything or are you just heading to the war room merrick will just head he woke up early did his normal routine a light jog because apparently stairs are our enemy so he's gonna keep up his cardio but that's about <laughs> it cool yeah you guys uh finally roll in around the same time and you see that it's uh jahara um, Catherine is there. Zelfus is there. Jenny is there. Uh, Short Jack is still resting. He he took probably the worst beating out of all of you guys. Um, so he's still sort of in the hospital or like the infirmary. Quinlan is here. The little uh, Skittermander. Additionally, Aerodaxis is also there, and uh, he is working with the Sononans. They're all sort of like huddled around the like table and consoles and stuff and are working on something. When you guys walk in, the sort of like workers, the the, the Imperial Armada sort of like soldiers all salute you. Like they all stand at attention and salute and sort of like give you guys the, the due respect of the returning heroes. And when everyone else notices you, Jahara walks over and just says, I hope you got some rest. We have been looking for Penateris, and Aerodaxis has located her. And uh, there is sort of like the, the star map of Casamal set up. And as you approach, uh, Aerodaxis walks over to you, Durin, and just says, Parsax. Is the name for our ship? Yes. Thank you. That means a lot to me. It was the least I could do. We have bigger problems. I've located Penateris, and if we have any hope of stopping the reckoning, It is to find her and put her to rest. And as you guys are walked over to the star map of Casamal, you see a floating red planet. And Johara says it doesn't make any sense that she would be here, but Eridaxis is sure. And you see that it is a scan of Exium 12, the living planet. Fuck. Hell yeah. What expression is on the planet's face? It's like a winky face. Just like, ding. Oh, okay. Damn, he's so coy. 
Uh, why is it surprising that she's there? Uh, Johara, like, sort of, like, pulls up scans of the planet and says, because it would stand to reason that if we're going under the assumption that her blood has been harvested, you would need a facility to do that. And trying to build on Exium 12 is next to impossible. The geography changes rapidly. The land shifts at seemingly random to to try to build a structure there is next to impossible like you, you it is just um, unless the planet is a part of the, the the scheme he smiles and just says the the living planet is it is not living it is a, a colloquial name because of the oh. fact that it it shifts and and changes its geography well that's disappointing yeah agreed Oh, well, then it's, a, then it's flying. It's a floating facility that just floats around the atmosphere. What, what if it's like the Dahlia material and it has some adaptive lab that can shift with the planet? He looks at you for a second and says, I'm, I'm not familiar with uh, this technology. What do you mean? It's like the, the healing gate. And I, I pop out the, the patent that we just flashed to everybody and I throw <laughs> it out. Hey, we didn't sign NDAs. It's fine. We didn't. <laughs> I mean, you stole it, so whatever. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> it's stolen. It's fine. We, one of our best friends is a teenager. He gave us that. He, oh. Jahara, kind of oh. like, <laughs> at you. Um, oh, Paramom, what are, where are you now? And Jahara sort of like hands it to Quinlan, who quickly scans it and throws it up and just says, I mean, yeah, this could be a possibility if, if they have nanite infused metals that are able to rapidly shift and, and change, then theoretically, Depending on the versatility of this material, it could build somewhere that is rapidly changing. Okay, well, so we know where Penateris is. Well, I mean, it's still a big planet. That we'll have to figure out. But the, I think the other thing we have to have to realize is what Asin said to us before. Yeah, where it all started. What did that? Where it all started. I'm a Cody. Where was the mansion where you and Alpha hung out? It was on Therum. Is, is that building still standing? Do we know? Does anyone know? Is there a way for us to find out? That's a place where things started. Wait, wait. What? What about where were you first created? Do you Your first remember, memories? Uh, my first. Do, do I know what my first memories are? Because I imagine it'd just be sitting down watching TV with Alpha. Yeah, that's kind of where like your memories start. Is you are already sort of like Cody, like you're there, just kind of like chilling and and doing Cody things with Alpha. Yeah, we were watching a movie and. We didn't talk much because I was a little nervous, and I guess maybe he was too, but we both laughed at the same part, and then we, you know. Because when we were imprisoned on Theorem, right? Yes. So when Azan appeared before me the first time and told me to go back to the beginning, we were already on Theorem. Now, he did say specifically where you guys first met that okay. time. Okay, so, okay. so it just he keeps on reusing the same question. Right. All right. What same if clue. We- different things could be referring to the cube maybe or the maybe. ship where where we fought the terrors true okay so that's three three possibilities for the beginning where the night crawler was or got destroyed yep or earth like we were we saw the night crawler remains on on uh useron yeah on useron when it exploded so that would just be a weird that one seems the weakest to me because it's just a, a place floating in the void, but it could be something. What about Earth? Earth is gone. I know, but that's where they met Penateris. That's where humans and Valai met for the first time. Do we even know those coordinates anymore? I mean, you'd, you'd be able to find Earth if you wanted to. The planet itself is still there. It's just like inhospitable. Like you can't live there anymore. It's It's been destroyed that way. Yeah, so we have four options. And why, why can't Asin just like give us a destination, not in speaking fucking riddles? Because he's a bit of a whiny fellow. Yeah, he also lied. Uh, I don't like men who lie. Jahara hasn't lied to us, I don't think. That's true. Jahara's an honest guy. While you guys have been talking, Jenny has actually pulled up a map of Therum and, and the different districts. And she shows you that, like, she can't find the mansion. Hmm. Is that is that good or bad? Uh, maybe that means it's not the mansion. I mean, I don't even see a record of Mazo ever living on Therum. What? Am I? Are you sure it was Therum? Uh, I was up until about a minute ago. I mean, Mazo's 
is a pretty like famous guy. I'm sure we could find like places he's owned, right? A mansion isn't that easy to hide. She she's like begins like opening up sort of like Mezo's sort of like public profile, and you get a list of residences, and none of them are Therum. Could it have been on Earth? Is the timeline messed up? Do we? Or is it, are you that old, Cody? Um, that's actually a really great question. <laughs> I mean, you know, Cody is at least sixty years old. When did Earth vanish? Uh, about eighty years. Eighty years. Could they be off by twenty? Do we have records of Mezo's like ownings on Earth? Uh, that probably doesn't exist. You know that like Contra started on Earth. Like Contra Dynamics was sort yeah. of like a one of the the main sort of facilitators and manufacturers of the Aeris shuttles. Like his business mm-hmm. was was like a a big part of it. So Contra Dynamics started on Earth, and he just kind of ported it over to uh, Casimal once they got here. Could I get in touch with Trunt and ask him where the the mansion was? I thought he couldn't talk to you, right? He, because of the he couldn't chip talk thing. about no. some things, but maybe that? Contra's on the run right now. Their CEO was just arrested, I believe. Mezo is focusing on whatever he's doing right now. So it we might be all right to get them to talk unless it's, oh, it was a spell. It was a pact of some kind, wasn't it? Yeah, but I think it was specifically to do with Alpha. So maybe maybe the location isn't, I don't know. Send a message to Trunt just to be safe. Uh, is there any chance I could call him, Dane? Sure. Yeah, I will say that you guys like exchange contact information. Mm-hmm. So when you go to like make a call, one of these Sononan soldiers looks at Jahara wearily, and Jahara's like, "Yes, this you can you can put this communication out. I know we've had an embargo for a while now, but yes, this outgoing communication can be sent." And as you approach the uh, terminal, you see a list of attempted communications and one of them that has been blocked was from Aerodaxis to Astrid. Mm-hmm. Like wait, recently? Uh, uh, about around the time that Astrid showed up to Sonona's Prime. What? Right. So it looks like the message he sent to Astrid, the one that like you guys assumed was him pretending to be her father, yep. uh, was never sent. Excuse me? Wait, I... Look, is Astrid in the room? Yeah, where's Astrid? Uh, Astrid and Thimble are here, yes. Okay. Um, Astrid, can you bring up the message you received from, you thought was from your father? uh, She looks at you and she says, yeah, 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 of course. She opens it and it is a like staticky grainy video of a silhouette of a man. And you just hear like through static every now and then things like (laughs) Astrid. Meet me on Sonoda's Prime. It it didn't go through. Aerodaxis, is that your handiwork? You see Aerodaxis sort of like pale and a, a wave of almost relief from him. Uh, and he says, that was not the message that I sent Astrid. Does that mean your dad is here? Or wait, was this Penny? Um, one of the technicians begins like frantically typing and is like you can see like the the color like changing in contrast and uh grain removal and stuff and they're trying to sort of like clear the the image cody leans in and says enhance uh they they (laughs) zoom in a little bit (laughs) it's working like i always thought it would and you end up getting enough of a picture to realize that the message that astrid received was from decker man i hate this guy so much hate this guy so what that, much. What does that weird, mean? Weird that Aerodaxis and Decker had the same idea at the same time. Well, obviously, Decker wanted to kill Astrid because of her, her name and his yeah. jealousy. But... No, it's too much of a coincidence. That doesn't, something's off. Very funny that he would do that, which would lead us here and ruin all his plans. What a silly man. Unless he wanted us here, but... The last five minutes have confused me to no end. Isn't this the part where we're supposed to get answers about things? We started with one thing we have to do, and now we have three? I, I'm going to call my friend. Yeah, you. they they sort of like open up a secure channel, and like uh, you're able to call Trunt. And for a moment, there's like a, 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 a you know, a connecting to, and Trunt picks up. Hi, hi Trunt. Hi, man. What's up? Uh, just a heads up. You're on speakerphone in the war room, so... Everybody say okay. I'm Sonoda Prime. <laughs> oh man, that's fucking wild, dude. Ev- everyone say hi. Hello, Trunt. It is my me, Merrick. You may have seen me on on the on the TV. Yeah, as a he, wanted criminal. 
he was he was a wanted criminal. Isn't he's one of my best friends. He's got four arms and, and a cool sword. And then this is Durin. Hi, hi Trent. I've, I've heard nothing but good things about you. Uh, you've probably heard some bad things. He had a bomb pouch in his mouth, but then he also was a fashion icon on Cert. And uh, you know, you've probably seen anyway. And then this is all the the soldier. I I probably shouldn't give you their names, and I don't know. My, anyway, I'm rambling. Quick question. <laughs> The mansion, can you tell me where that was? Where where we were friends? Um, because I thought it was somewhere, and then apparently it's not in the somewhere. He looks at you for a second and just says, Goodbye, Cody, and hangs up. Interesting. Okay. Everything so attached to that mansion. He or can't, wherever it is. He can't do that. All right, back to what we have to deal with uh, again. We're back to a bunch of different things. Do we have to spend more time thinking about Decker's message, or are we is there more to that that we need to put thought and energy into? <laughs> Dang. That sounds like a GM question. <laughs> Can I call Isabella? Izzy's dead. She was on Userhan. Oh, shit. Well, Ooh. we don't know. <laughs> people escaped. I mean, you, you can try. The people escaped, right? <laughs> Very few people escaped. This, this caller I, is not available at this time. Please try again. I roll later. a look check? Sure. Nat 20 or bus, baby. <laughs> I can't look. I can't look. Somebody look for me. We can't. No, it's a 14. That's a 14. Uh, okay. Maybe she's alive. I think Cody goes, I'll call Isabella. And then freezes and is like, oh my, oh my, oh my God. Cause like Cody had his breakdown and just like, didn't think I didn't process a lot of shit. And just now he's realizing there's so much more that he didn't process. And he like puts the number in. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you tried to call Izzy. And uh, she answers. Oh, my God. I'm almost more concerned about that right this second. <laughs> Izzy, you're on speakerphone in the war room of Sonona's, and I'm so glad you're okay. I, I mean, I'm, I'm glad you're okay, too, darling. What's up? Where are you? I was able to get on an evacuation shuttle when okay. oh when you guys visited me. I said a lot of things I, I probably shouldn't have. So I was already making an escape thankfully before everything happened that's okay and don't worry i'm not gonna ask you anything more i just want to check on you and i'm gonna sign where was the planet where was the mansion we met she raises her hands into frame of the camera and they begin like trembling and she like is is trying to sign but you can tell she can't and she looks at you with sort of like fear in her eyes I'm just going to say planets, and if so, for some reason one of these planets is a place that you find interesting, just react in any way, shape, or Wait, form. Wait, hold on, hold on. Um, I I want to, hmm, I write down something on a piece of paper, and I pass it to Durin, and it says, uh, can you can you trace the call? Like, I want to find out where she is. I definitely flash it to one of the, uh, the techs that are working on, that are here, I guess, and see if they can, like, kind of nudge towards it. Uh, yeah, it, it's pretty easy. Like it's it's not like a it, it's pretty easy. Like when you're doing interplanetary communication, mm-hmm. like you kind of need to know what planet they're on. Um, mm-hmm. So she's on Therum. OK, um, I'm just I'm so glad you you got out safe. We should hang out sometime. Like hopefully I will have free time coming up soon. That would that would be great. Yeah, I, I would love to see you guys again in, in sort of a more chill atmosphere. I'm going to try to sense motive. Is she like at gunpoint or something? <laughs> No, no, she's that's a 12 you w- i wouldn't say she's not at active gunpoint okay so just the general fear of yes and okay. this seems to be like there seems to be something like before she was talking to you about yeah, alpha like that's, she, mm-hmm. but this seems to be like she can't there's like a physical restriction from doing it okay uh i i, I love you okay i'll i'll call again be safe always and i hang up okay i i got nothing guys because the way my brain goes on this is that before we go to Penateris directly, I would like to know why Azen thinks Cody's the key. Yeah, me, me too. Personally, I would sort of like that mystery solved before we go and do that, but maybe one leads to the other. Because if this metal's involved, that means Mezo's probably involved or something. I don't know. Aerodaxis, like, cocks his head and he says, Why are you confused? What, what do you mean? I would imagine that Azen believes that Cody is the key because... He is Valai. 